The Lord be with you. Today for our self-reflection as we think about what it means to be the people of the King of Glory, uh, it was brought to mind uh, that sometimes we go through periods of fasting in our lives. Now, as a spiritual discipline, as a personal spiritual discipline, the Bible really doesn't have much to say about it. Uh, in the Law and the Prophets, uh, there's one day a year where the fast is commanded, you know, denying yourself. Uh, a couple of fasts are mentioned in the Law and the Prophets. Uh, Jesus kind of mentions it as kind of what Jews do, uh, but does he give his, you know, stamp over rule and go, yeah, you really should be fasting. Uh, the Bible really doesn't have much to say about the personal practice of fasting. Uh, it's a spiritual discipline that, I, you know, I kind of want to say it's universal across people and religions that uh, sometimes in our lives we need to submit our appetites and desires, uh, you know, submit our thoughts, submit our bodies, and deny them and set those things aside and submit them to our will, and then submit our will to God, and seek God's will and God's purpose. So I'm not going to advocate the personal practice of fasting. What I am going to talk about, though, is God-imposed fasts. And you can say when God takes something away from us, or when God allows something to take away from us, uh, you know, uh, you can use whatever wording you want. I always blame God because he seems to be the one in charge. So what happens when God takes something away from us? So just to give a, a couple of examples, uh, when God took away the gathering of God's people, you know, at least initially, uh, uh, with the lockdown, how do we respond? And there, there's... Uh, a strong desire sometimes to just fix it. We got to fix the problem. Or we can ask the question, you know, what is God really actually trying to teach us here? Uh, you know, before we go to the fix, stop and ask, what is God teaching us here? You know, and especially when it came to taking away the Lord's Supper, uh, you know, the word can go broadcast. It can go, you know, from my mouth into, you know, the airwaves and the internet. And, you know, you at a different time, at a different place can listen to what I'm saying right now. God's word can be broadcast forth. You know, there's still something special about gathering to hear God's word, most certainly. But when it comes to the Lord's Supper, and again, I'm, I don't want to be dogmatic about this, but Baptism and the Lord's Supper is something we do together, especially the family meal. You know, it's, it's hard to have a meal together when we're at different times or different locations. How do you have a family meal together separated by time or place? That seems a little odd to me. Why would God take that away from us? What was he trying to teach us with that fast of, on the Lord's Supper? And then I think of, you know, personal example, back in April when I was visiting King of Glory and I had a call to be your pastor and I was thinking about the call and praying about the call. And there were three people when I was here in April, three people, you know, Mick and Glorian and Ron. And I spent a lot of time with these three people and they were godly people and they were encouraging people. And you notice I'm talking about them in the past tense, because as soon as I showed up, they left. They said, hey, great, Steve, we're so glad you're here. Bye. Bye. And I'm going, hey, you were part of the reason. You were a big reason I came to this church. So why would God take away these people from me, especially since, you know, Ron and Ruth, they, they played instruments and they played so well and they led the congregation so well. And then they leave and they left us without music and especially with Jen not being able to play. And so, you know, uh, I so appreciate the horn. Uh, it's more of an accompanying instrument. So what do we do? Do we, you know, it's, it's like God has taken away music from us. And it's like, you know, the Bible commands that we sing. It doesn't command music, but wow, the Bible sure loves musical instruments. And then what do we do? Do we fix for it? Do we hire somebody? Do we, you know, have pre-recorded music? You know, what some people call canned music. Uh, I have this general guiding principle that God brings exactly the people that he wants. And if someone's not there, it's like God is saying, hey, 
you don't need that person there right now. Okay, so do we fix it? Or do we say, who are the people God has given to us? And in fact, at this time, God has given to us three, four, if you include me, five, there might be even six people out there uh, that I know of who have wonderful voices. I won't include myself, though I can sing and kind of. Uh, so is God calling us to have a choir lead the congregation singing? You know, a cappella? Again, I, I don't have the answer to this. What I am suggesting is when God takes something away from us, let's not quick go, <gasps> We need to fix it. We need to replace whatever it is that he took away. Whatever it is we lost, we don't need to fix it. We don't need to replace it. We can stop and we can say, what is God teaching us? Who has God given us? Who needs, who is God calling to step forward and take leadership? And by leadership, I simply mean action, you know, stepping forward and saying, hey, it's my turn at bat, you know? So I, I have no clear answers. But this is kind of, I think, going to determine who we are as a congregation and where we go in the future by whether we focus on what we've lost or what God has given to us, and especially who God has given to us. You know, both the people he's brought to us and the people he's placed around us, right? Yeah. Uh, just food for thought. I, I have no dogmatic, clear answers for any of this. God bless.